hello you guys and welcome back to my channel welcome if it's your first time kinan to be saying my toilet and i do hope you will become a part of this family by clicking the red subscribe button down below today we are back with another episode of rebirth and this is episode six and i was just thinking right now that maybe when we get to 10 we will take a little production break <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm back with another episode and I hope you guys have been enjoying so far um, So today I wanted to talk about my career journey and just sort of where it started I know that I have a few or a lot of new followers who might not know this about me you guys maybe joined the family after i quit corporate and um you guys don't know that like that part of my life basically and for those of you who do know maybe you don't have you know like the the meat of the story <laughs> so yeah so today that's why i just thought let me come and share about my career journey where it started and yeah i hope you guys will enjoy this episode so um if you are new here i was in corporate um and i worked there for about eight years and i started working in 2013 right but before we actually get there let's backtrack for a bit so i went to north West University for those of you who don't know that's where I did that's where I studied and in my undergrad I did economics and risk management but when I enrolled I actually enrolled for just become economics because I've just always wanted to be an economist you guys and I actually think that this is something I might pursue in the future <laughs> not now though like right now I don't see myself studying but I feel like this is something that I might still um, pursue I really really had an interest in like economics so um yeah and I fell in love with it and I fell in love with it in grade 10 I think I don't know if it was my teacher or if it was just the subject itself but I really fell in love with economics and that's what I wanted to study to study I actually applied at I think three institutions I think UP Northwest University and UJ but I got accepted at um, Northwest University and also my mom did not like the idea of me going to study like far away from home um, which was like Pretoria and I think UJ also she wasn't comfortable with it um, she was more like fond of the idea of me going to Vanderbilt Park, Northwest University in the fun, in the Val Triangle campus because it's like not far from, from home, you know. So yeah, that's where I got accepted and um, I guess her prayers worked. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's how I got accepted and I enrolled for BCom Economics and I was accepted for that course. I did that in my first year and then second year or no, actually I think late in my first year, I actually discovered the module risk management, right? And um, when I read more about it, I just developed an interest in the subject. And I'm like, hmm, this looks interesting. Let me add it into my um my course right and also because it was not far off from what i was doing so it was not going to change um, a lot of my modules or my course i guess i decided it was not a bad idea because i was still doing economics as a major as well and then i added risk management and i did that so then my then i changed my course name to become economics and risk management it changed it changed to that in my second year and that's what i studied and i did that in my second year then when i was in my third year my interest in economics sort of shifted to risk management and i decided i actually want to do a postgrad in risk management and major in risk management because i actually can see myself working as a risk analyst or risk manager working for a bank and the idea of that like seemed very very interesting to me and so that's what i did i applied for a postgrad and i did my postgrad in become uh become risk become bank risk management yes that was the name of my postgraduate qualification and yeah this was in 2011 2011 no 2012 yeah i did my postgrad in 2012 so the course i was doing was not necessarily difficult but the thing that i struggled with was or the one module that i struggled with was accounting because i had accounting as a major as well i also had maths i think yo guys accounting though 
that module dribbled me that module dribbled me yo like it drilled me to a point where i repeated it in the next no i didn't repeat it i failed it in first semester and uh -uh, i failed it in second semester and i had to carry it into my second year and do it in my second year and then my second year accounting I had to do it in my third year luckily in third year i didn't have accounting but yeah that was the module that dribbled me i hated it so so much i hated so much guys um but eventually i passed it and i think i passed it couple my 50 or a 51 like something like that but we made it through so but yeah most of my modules i don't think that i really struggled with um it was just accounting grammar economics i really really did well in economics i did well in risk management because like i said i had an interest in those languages <laughs> not those languages those modules and yeah so those ones i really did well in and yeah third year i think went rather smoothly it was not too bad because i didn't have accounting again went smoothly in my honest year though um what was challenging was investments and derivatives those two modules or was it one module i don't remember but yo yeah those ones were challenging they were really they were a real challenge but other than that i think everything else was fine it was just the workload that was an issue but also remember at the time you just it's just you and your books like honestly there's nothing else that you're busy with um or at least for me like honestly i, I had no life i had no other life than just studying or oh, my my other life was my boyfriend i'm lying <laughs> <laughs> my other life <laughs> consisted of my boyfriend especially because he stayed a dress as well so he was a bit of a distraction but uh, we managed to <laughs> we managed to pass regardless um but yeah those were my main focus honestly at um in varsity it was just my books and my boyfriend <laughs> um whom we were acting like husband and wife at rates without our parents knowing hey guys but anyways um this is why i'm not i'm not letting my daughter stay dressed ah, ah my daughter my daughter will not stay dressed she, she will drive I, i'd rather give her my car she will drive from home to school <laughs> every day i mean like cape town it's fine she'll drive from here to cape town and back <laughs> um but yeah anyways in 2012 while i was still studying i was also applying for jobs luckily i had a friend who also had done the same course as i was doing at the time but he um he had started work already so he was a year ahead of me so he started work already before me so while i was still in my postgrad he was already doing his first year and so a lot of the information about like where to apply how to apply and um what's out there what's open what's available he was very helpful with that so um so yeah he was sort of maybe like my connect so to speak and he was really helping me with that but also during that time while i was still studying i um registered on like career what do they call them uh is it agencies but like these sites where you register your details and you put your you upload your cvs and every time they'll post jobs that are available in different countries not countries companies that relate to your degree or what you've studied or your interest and then you will just go in there and apply i think some of them are career junction i don't know if most of them still exist but yeah i do remember like career junction um i think there was career net as well and um and obviously linkedin i also did um put up my profile on linkedin but also during that time a lot of banks were offering like graduate programs as well as winter school leadership programs and all of that stuff and i started applying for that i remember i applied for a winter school program at one of the four major banks and i went for an interview but unfortunately they didn't hire me and i think if i remember correctly you only received a stipend and not necessarily like a salary or if it was just for experience i don't remember you guys please correct me if i'm wrong but yeah it was a long time ago so <laughs> but yeah um i got rejected and then i applied for a lot of like graduate programs i think my friend who i spoke about earlier uh where he worked he was he had been accepted as a graduate um under their graduate program so 
he also advised me to like look at most of these companies and apply for their graduate programs right so that's what i did i applied and luckily i was called for an interview but the interview i was only called for an interview after i had graduated which was 2013 and this was in um or oh, actually i could be wrong i might have gone for an interview in december or around november and then um yeah so i went to one of the four banks again but a different one this time i went for an interview and this is one of those interviews where in my in episode two of this series i spoke about dragging my mom with to all my interviews because i was scared of traveling to Joburg alone and we we're using taxis because my mom didn't have a car at the time so this was one of those interviews where she came with me to Santon for an interview and shame she was waiting for me my poor mom she was waiting for me i went in for an interview and um felt so intimidated because there were a lot of us there a lot of graduates there everyone was like all cleaned up people wearing people wearing suits and um yeah so we we're all there at like their leadership center and went through the interviews went through all the phases and um actually i think that no at the leadership center i think that was the second phase of the interview the first one was like a face to face with like the manager and then i met the the other one you had to do a presentation of some sort oh my gosh um yeah and then guys i'm so sorry if i'm all over the place it was a long time ago so please bear with me but after the interviews were done we went home and then i think the next day or like two days later i received a phone call to say that unfortunately i did not make it for the graduate program and you can imagine how devastated i was and this was around december holidays because I, I remember i was i was at home at the time so you can imagine how devastated i was receiving that call i was with my mom and i was crying and i was just so sad and she was like she said to me she encouraged me she said to me listen you don't know how god works they might actually call you for a different role like the same company they might actually call you for something else so um, i understand that you're feeling sad but just be hopeful and be positive right and yeah at the time i obviously didn't see how that was possible in that moment because of what i was going through but about a couple of days later i received a call you guys yeah Yo, you know god works in just mysterious ways god yeah I, I can never stop talking about that guy you guys that guy shim anyways a few days later i did receive a call from the same company and they said to me um actually we would like to call you for a different role uh, in the bank and i'm like you are kidding me but no we are serious you need to come for another interview um, for a different role so we will send you the details of the interview and then you can come through you guys i could not believe it literally what my mom said it actually came to pass and it was just so mind-blowing so let me actually paint this picture so when we were doing the graduate program interviews right so all the managers from the different departments were there right like lots and lots of them and i think that during one of your um one of your sessions not not sessions during one of your interviews while you're sitting there there is a panel obviously of people that are interviewing you and then in that panel it's different managers and different heads of different business units so one of the heads they actually like spotted me and they wanted me to come work for their team right and so that's how i got i landed that interview when i went for that interview it was with that particular um, business unit head who had identified me there and then we went into the interview and the interview was actually not as intense as what i had been through in the graduate program like sessions or interview sessions so yeah it was actually more like a casual conversation right like them trying to get to know me and after that i landed the job you guys like i could not i was just in disbelief honestly at how all of this had played out that's why i say that i will never ever ever stop talking about this guy up there like that guy you guys that guy <laughs> 
so yeah i landed that job and i started in jan 2013 um i actually do remember that day i think it was the 11th of january 2013 and working there you guys at that company as intimidating as those buildings were as intimidating as the people were it was a dream come true something that i never never in my wildest dreams um, thought would happen for me like i never imagined myself i mean i i no actually to be honest i did think of myself like living a different life obviously but i didn't know what it looked like i didn't visualize it because i had never been in spaces like that so i used to think about like oh i want to live a different life obviously i want to work i want to get a job and like move into an apartment but i didn't know what that would look like because i had never seen it right i'd never been in it i'd never experienced so for me to walk into those buildings and just like be around <laughs> the color the caliber of people you know it was just so mindful it was a dream come true you guys i could not believe that it was happening for me that i was in those spaces but i will admit that it was very very intimidating you guys and um that's why my husband and i actually speak about this like quite a lot that it's so important to um expose young people especially from the townships who don't have have access to things you know like it's so important to expose them um, to different worlds so that when they get to these spaces or just for them to just know that it is possible that it can happen for me as well and it's like something that is like tangible because they can see it and they can walk into it and experience it and it becomes more uh, relatable to them yes yeah. so my husband and i always speak about this like all all the time and so yeah for me it was um yeah it was just a different world altogether as much as i was like grateful to be in that space and excited i was very very much intimidated as well um in the same breath actually um because of the people like i said because of how people carried themselves how people spoke like people walked most of the people that i was or i saw walked like they belonged there and i didn't know how to fit in into those spaces so it was very very, very challenging for me and i really really struggled so much you guys like i really 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 struggled and although it may have not appeared or looked like that on the outside but internally it was a battle every single day of feeling like i did not belong there i guess it was imposter syndrome um, but also just um not being confident in in uh, like where i came from and i mean i was not ashamed of it but like i just felt like i was not good enough being with people who came from different backgrounds and so that was very intimidating and also um how people spoke and which universities they came from and um yeah so i just felt like i was different like i was less than you know and it was all in my head but it was also like a um, an internal battle because how i tried to show up i didn't want it to reflect how i was feeling inside and i actually remember in my first video um in my second video actually someone actually said that when i was in corporate they actually like used to think that i you know had my thing all together and like the way i carried myself and i'm like girl if only you knew you knew what was going on in here in my head and in my in my heart <laughs> Um, but anyways yeah guys it was just a struggle and i remember reading books about like how to be confident i actually read um joyce meyer's book how to be confident and i think that's one of the books that really really helped me during that period of my life with learning more about being confident in who god says you are and um, understanding that because you're in that space even though you may you may feel out of place but know that you are there for a reason and you belong there and so you must act like you belong there because you do that's why you were chosen for that and for me actually with how i was you know chosen to be in that space or to work there i didn't go like the traditional route where i applied for a graduate program and i went in with all the graduates but out of the graduates they picked me for a different role a specific role which was going to be more permanent right so for me already when that journey began it just showed me that um, God was not calling me because I was qualified, but he was qualifying me because I was called. And from that moment on, from that point on, I knew that my journey throughout is just going to be different. It's just going to be God trying to prove to me or not even trying, but proving to me that um, 
things are not limited to certain types of people because that's what i used to believe but like you can be you can come from this background and still sit in these spaces or you can come from um you can grow up not having this and still come and sit with people who have that and it does not mean that you are less than those people but it's because i see you're fitting to be in the spaces maybe to learn something you know from those people or to see the world a bit differently that you can sit and fit in these spaces even though you don't have one two three and honestly it's also not really about that it's not about that it's not about what those people have and what you don't have or where you went to varsity and where these people went that is not the point the point is that you are in this space together at this time serving a purpose and so i had to really step into that even though it was difficult but i think that um like i was saying that me being handpicked sort of for that role it sort of showed me that you know what god is not here to play games like god is here to show me that he's at work and i need to tap into that and stop um, limiting myself and that book really really helped me i will put up a picture of it over here i've shared this book before but like years ago i think or a year ago or two years ago i don't know but it's been a while that um, i've spoken about it but it really really helped me through that season of my life you guys and i wish that a lot of women who struggle with confidence i like i would recommend this book over and over and over again to anyone struggling with self-confidence imposter syndrome self limiting beliefs and yeah just feeling like you are inadequate um, i would highly recommend that you read that book so it really really carried me during that season of season of my life and um yeah so while i was still there i then got to a point where i felt like i think i worked for about two and a half years and i got to a point where um i felt like i needed something different i needed to grow because um i was not seeing any movement in my career right and also at the time you guys i used to be so like career focused and career orientated and i just saw myself as this woman that's gonna climb the corporate ladder and that's gonna be the head of something something i did not know at the time what that thing was but i just saw myself like really pivoting in my corporate career and i tried to show up as that person you know um like i was really 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 into corporate during that time so i yeah like i said i started feeling like okay you know what i think i want more i want different i want to learn i want to grow and also because my peers also were moving around and i was like in the same position and i think that was um I want to say maybe a mistake but also not so much because the mistake could be that i'm comparing my journey with other people right whereas my path is different but also i think looking at everything and how it played out it was meant to happen like that right otherwise god wouldn't have allowed me to move from my position at the time but because then he opened the doors for me to leave then i guess things were meant to happen the way they did so i applied for another role um at a different um company and also at the time i was very obsessed with like titles and because my first job i was a risk analyst and i was like no the next step now is for me to be a manager what do you mean especially because i want to climb this ladder right so i applied um and then the, my next job i was a specialist but you guys i hated hated working in that environment and i'm not gonna mention the the, the company but like oh i hated that place hated 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 it it was in insurance and it was in pretoria i felt like not a lot of people were going to the north so i was like i'm gonna be against traffic and it's a different environment it's a small company so anyways i get this job and i work there and i am miserable like guys i hate the drive it's far <laughs> as much as it's against traffic it is far like it's far i hate driving there i hate the environment the company's culture i hate it it's completely different from where i come from and yeah man like i just i just hated being there i honestly hated being there in my next video i'm going to go into the detail of what also contributed in just my misery in that company but um yeah like i hated working there you guys i think i worked for eight months and actually in my sixth month when i was there i started applying i'm like nah i went out i actually reached out to my previous manager and i'm like hey if there's an opening please <laughs> i was so desperate guys i wanted to go i wanted out okay i was not happy shem 
um but anyways uh and luckily after eight months i landed another job um at another bank now so i went back to banking but it was a different bank i went back to banking and there i was now going to be a manager so i was a risk manager and i was so excited i was an operational risk manager and i was so excited about it went back to that company worked there for three years was it 2015 16 17 18 19 20 oh for five years yes i worked for five years yeah i worked there for five years and i loved it there i really really loved it especially when um the whole working from home thing started actually the company introduced that before covid um it was actually two years before covid so in 2018 but i missed 2018 because i felt i was pregnant with Rui, so i was at home so i only got into it later in 2018 in 2018 and then uh, 2019 kind of covid 2019 or 2020 2019 baby covid 2019 yeah so in 2019 then covid hit but they had been practicing it like for those few months before and yeah so that was like really nice that we could work from home and my team was lovely and yeah it was just a great environment and i enjoyed it um so that is basically my journey you guys i actually on tiktok the other day i saw um a video about like if you are looking for a job i know that things are different to how they used to be in the past or in the time when i was like in the market you know um looking for jobs in corporate i understand that things are different now because of unemployment it's not as easy um i can't say it was easy then but for me honestly i didn't really struggle much but like i understand that right now the market is very very different and so because of an unemployment rates it might be diff it is difficult actually it is difficult for people to find jobs but um, i did come across a video that i want to share with you guys if you are in the market looking for a job or you are in varsity and you are about to go into the job market so this video is basically about like how to get noticed by recruiters on linkedin especially so i saw this video it was shared by um donald ngomo on tiktok i'm gonna leave a link to this video down below you guys and he's basically sharing like five tips on how to get noticed by recruiters on linkedin and he says that he attended a training session um with linkedin and they basically or with recruiters and they were basically saying this is what we are looking for and this is how to be more noticeable on linkedin and he's sharing these five tips and i thought that maybe they might help someone if you're looking for a job for example or you know somebody that is looking for a job you can share this link with them i'm gonna put it in the description box down below and hopefully it will help someone and yeah you guys i think i'm gonna end this video right here if you are currently looking for a job and or you are out of a job i am praying for you you are in my heart i know that things are very very tough out there i understand that things are not the same as how they were in the past but just trust and believe in god's timing and just know that things will always work out the way they meant to work when i got my first job i don't think that it was because i am um like god's favorite or i am doing like something Something right it was just god's mercy and honestly at the time as a family in my home we really really needed it we really like god knew that we really needed that breakthrough because of what we were going through at the time so it might look like um ah, when are you just saying because you had it easy that's not the case but it was where we were as a family we needed that like god knew that that is what would sort of save us i guess um and that's why he made it happen for us and so i'm praying for you you are in my heart and you are in my thoughts and prayers and i hope that things will work out for you the same way that they do for other kids that you are sitting and watching and looking at and thinking that things are going easy for them or they're coming quicker for them i'm really really praying that things also work out for you when you get a job and you're able to help your family yourself and you're just able to better things for yourself and your life 
and that is it you guys about my career journey i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and you got a little bit of a background about what i studied if you have like more questions maybe that you'd like to ask me please um leave them in the comment section down below and i'll try to answer them but otherwise i am gonna close off this video and end it off here i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did big big thumbs up you guys comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't we're almost at 50k and you guys remember that i still have a bag of products and goodies that i've been keeping for 50k i almost even like gave them away to some other people because we were not just we were just not getting there but anyway we are almost there so we will have that giveaway let's keep subscribing tell your friends to tell their friends to keep subscribing and i hope that i will see you guys in my next one love you guys so much thank you for watching bye guys